Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel. Okay, we're going to be going over something that's old now, but I just didn't get a chance to uh, put my video out. And you know, it just is what it is. You're going to like it, whether it's 10 days or 20 days old or you're not. Okay, let's just get on into it. We're going to be talking about The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 11, Episode 19, No Money, No Problems. Okay. I'm just going to give highlights because, like I said, I think you all may have, you know, gotten plenty of reviews. If not, you saw the show yourself and gathered your own opinions. But I just put my two cents in along with everybody else. How about that? Okay. First of all, we're going to talk about Greg and Nene. And they so-called back and forth. Nene feeling like she's being dumped on. She don't really feel love at this time because Greg is going through a you know a difficult time with the cancer and not taking chemo. Then he's saying he had to go back and rethink the idea of taking chemo and just all this kind of stuff. But I was like Greg when he came out when then he was trying to give him some I guess fresh orange juice or whatnot. She wanted to make it a little chilly for him so he can like, you know, because nobody really want to drink warm or temperature orange juice. Maybe a few, but I don't like it like that. I like everything ice cold. You know what I'm saying? He has a better taste. But anyway, he come in in the uh, kitchen and, you know, he's thankful that Nene wanted to give him something to quench his thirst if he was indeed thirsty. But since she was going to have a, a, a Q&A with him... I guess she felt he needed to have something in case he gets a little parched, okay? And so he's saying, Nene, uh, I can't drink that. That got ice in it. And you know I can't touch nothing cold. I said, Greg, if you don't sit your little butt down somewhere, I mean, when you wash your hands, you got to put the cold water on and hot water to mix it up to room temp, right? So you're going to feel a little cold. I said, oh, Lord, he acting just like a baby child. But anyway, Nene was like, okay, uh, let me just take the ice out then. <laughs> I was like, oh, Lord, Nene. Caregivers, I tell you, they need their own special day. They need their own day of pampering or maybe a week. You know, it just depends on how bad you getting beat up by the sick one. Okay, but I like, what was Greg like when he was young? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he got plenty of cussing out because he just was like totally out to lunch i guess when he got sick and his mom and dad had to take care of him he probably falling out everywhere like he couldn't do nothing he's on his deathbed and look at him now a full grown uh what seven year old man i guess maybe late 60s but he still look good very nice gentleman but i thought i would have hit him beside his head and, and sit him down to myself so kudos to Nene for putting up with Greg, because if Greg, like I said, take that situation about some um, ice cubes and some um, wine glass with orange shoes, he was cutting up about the temperature. <laughs> I think I would have lost my mind too, but I would have got organized on his behind. Everything that he uh, couldn't do or could do, I would put it on the refrigerator in the kitchen. I would put it on my... Um, vanity table when I'm getting dressed or put it on uh the bathroom uh glass mirror and you know in the bathroom where you're washing up or taking a shower just so I would and, and furthermore I would have somebody in his family that he loved dearly or we would hire somebody that he can get to love dearly to help him with his little Monday mundane things okay and I would get me an assistant to help me out to do some of the things that Greg used to do. Okay, until everybody can get on the same schedule again. That's just my thing. But it was cute how they both made up. Then he got a chance to vent a little. She was very respectful. And he was receiving it all well. And I was glad that he got out of his feelings and let the Lord intervene for him instead of him making and writing his own demise story. Okay, or come back. So that was cool. So we're going to move on. I just had to start with Greg because he about, must, about tickled me to death. Okay. When he said, I can't have nothing cold. It's cold. That's a great situation down so well. But anyway, now we're going to go to um, 
Let's go back to Riley. Riley was showing out as well on this episode. Riley was like, I'm sick and tired of you talking about having babies, mama. And I was surprised that Mama Joyce going to say, you know, she had it all over to do again since she had lost her son earlier on in her, I guess, uh, younger uh, fertile year, she would have had some more kids besides just those two. Uh, but I was like, Mom Joyce, okay, sit down somewhere because when Candy bring them other two eggs to fruition to babies, and she's saying she's gonna have two girls, I'm like, can you, can you pick and choose now what you want to have? Ain't they playing a little bit too much into God's? theory of how he's gonna bring you a child but i guess you can now when you tamper with you know genetics and all of that man if they can bring dolly the cow out or sheep i think it was a sheep and you know cloning all this i guess you can if you want two girls you want two girls they're like Todd i don't want another son and help rule uh the dynasty that they're gonna leave for their children but okay you want to mess with girls okay so be it whatever but that's, you know, Riley was looking out for her future, like, uh-uh, you got, you got, mm -mm, you got Kayla, okay, then you got Ace, then you got me, and we all got expensive taste, that, that I, don't, I don't think it's going to work, Mom, she said what she probably wanted to say, your money's going too fast, I don't care how many businesses you're going to uh, call yourself, uh, construct for us, hell, we might not want to, hell, I might not even want to be bothered with your bedroom, lying candy and his seductiveness and stuff, I, that's you, not me, mama, you know, and it probably does seem kind of conservative and, and brainy, you know what I'm saying, so, I don't think she would be like the face of anything such as seductively, I mean, maybe later on, she may fool me, but I just think, like, she's more into her book, smart, science, technology, and all that kind of stuff. She ain't into the entertainment, porn, or uh, kind of venue. But, okay, she can always sell it off or whatever, sell her part, and get her some money, pack it back. Because Ron just seems like a self-starter, uh, a woman that's going to define her own self. She ain't going to live in her shadows of her mother and the entertainment business. She seems like she's going to do something else. So we'll be watching her later on. Um, but she got it all out on uh Todd and Candy and Todd in the background talking about some calm down. No, nah, Riley got no nah, I like how Riley speak her mind when they ask her. You know what I'm saying? Riley like, no, nah, this y'all life, this how y'all wanna do it. You know, I ain't asked to come here. I'm being a good kid. I'm making good grades. I plan to go to college. I plan to do something very far away from you all and in my own right. Okay. Uh because I got a brain. So, I'm not thinking about all these kids y'all trying to have and think I'm going to sit here and play mother hand to them because they're going to be looking at me as big sister and Todd's going to do what he want to do more so chasing after mama and the money. Mama going out living her dream and stuff like that and thinking I'm going to do it with all these kids. And I know Aunt Bertha, um, Grandma Joyce, and the other aunt, mm -mm, they ain't going to be around here and I ain't finna be accessible either. I got a life. So, she about more. Say, you know, mom, you ain't giving me none of your time. You really never gave me any of your time. And now that your career with the Real Housewives of Atlanta done put you on dead, you just taking advantage and, and, and going and trying to do everything that you think I want instead of giving me my time. And, you know, she's really throwing red flags at Ken and saying, mama, you didn't give me time. You didn't give me my share of time that I needed with you. Because, you know, daddy, you know, he was out there young, but didn't want to claim it, and then he wanted to claim it, and all this back and forth and stuff. So we're not really close. I know he's my daddy. He know I'm his daughter. But, you know, so much time has gone, you know, under the water and it, it, it just ain't working for me. Okay. So it's like she's already drawing her lines and saying and Candy don't even know what the daughter's telling her. And Riley's really telling her, I need time. I need to know my mama. I need to know what makes my mama tick. Okay, not the business side, none of that. I want to know, and I want my mama to be there for me. So when I do get out on my own, and I want to have my own family, I have some foundation. But it seems like the only foundation she's going to have with Mama George, Aunt Bertha, and everybody else that she see on a daily basis. And not all these phone calls or these little chit-chats or FaceTiming and Skyping that, you know, her mother's doing. And, you know, Ken don't really pay attention to her, uh, she's really going to miss out on the better years. And when she's going to want to spend time with Riley while she's preparing this dynasty for them to inherit, uh, Riley's like, 
you know, it's going to be too late, mama. I don't really know you like I should know you. So Candy need to take heed at what her daughter is saying. And uh, she's saying she's going to revamp her schedule because uh, she's going to have these two babies. And they're going to be girls. And this, that, and the third. I'm like, okay, man. Just like she don't told you, she ain't finna be no babysitter. And you ain't got no time for them. So I don't know how they gonna survive. I watch out for baby Ace, but because uh, I was one of the brothers, but mm, I don't know. I don't know. I'm already ain't close to my siblings on my daddy's side. And then you wanna bring two. I don't know, because we got too far. We too far apart in age. So I gotta live my life. So it is what it is, mama. You don't told you, but okay so i was like okay girl okay cool 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 riley did that darn thing she shut mama joyce down too you know she let her speak and you know i don't know what mama joyce having i i don't know an epiphany or something but she's gonna be back on tall ass again and it's gonna be a big issue but you know mama joyce getting everything she wants so and she did just right deserve it she pretty much gave up her life to support her daughter's dream so yeah candy uh definitely should play forward with her mom and make sure her you know life is very comfortable uh until she passed on out this world so i get it got it good so then we go we leave that issue because you know it ain't never baby land for candy so we would go, got great, we got new. okay, we're gonna go and talk about Eva, her coming back <laughs> from a, a luxury honeymoon and anything she wanna add from her marriage, her wedding, and that that took place. So she meets Candy at a little restaurant and she's telling Candy, Girl, I gotta move. You know, and Candy like, girl, you have this glow about you. Oh, I see. You just been sexing and everybody's been wonderful. And she's enjoying the compliments, this, that, and third, and all this this jazz going on. And then she goes, So well, I gotta move in two days. And she said, what? What do you mean you just got back off your honeymoon? You don't spend uh, major coins, you know, pennies, dimes, dollars, thousands, you know, on your wedding. What do you mean you tell me you got to move? So, even give her a little spiel of why she feels she needs to move. But it is what it is, okay? The can is thinking, you know, hey, something's going on with that because that don't make no sense. Okay, Candy was trying to teach her a little lesson in finance, but Eva wasn't playing into it. She just said, I got to move, girl. I got to move. So, uh, then we go to Marla. Well, let's go back a little bit. Uh, Eva was telling Candy that, you know, her event planner or I don't know the one who was conducting the wedding for was telling her you know at a time when you're getting married so much going on here and there people start lying on you throwing salt on your name this and third and you know Eva didn't think that that would happen to her she said it did happen to her her bridesmaid uh once Anita Sonata or whatever was throwing salt on her name and the wedding planner and one of her bridesmaids got the final yeah I'm like girl Whatever, moving on. I didn't really want to hear that because we didn't see it take place, so it is what it is. But it brings us into the store. Marlo calling Tanya and uh, Nene over to the house, you know, to put some little girl chit chat here and there. And of course, the uh, main topic of subject is uh, Eva and her displacement in her homes and cars getting repossessed. And don't get me wrong, Marlo. She's the person that's supposed to drop the gossip. See, that's what a lot of people don't understand about this messy reality um, uh, shows and stuff. Somebody got to bring the damage in. You know, she's just a bone collector. That's what we named Sheree. You know, she didn't do it as well as Marlo. Because Marlo put a little class or elegant on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, do I want to touch this bottle of gossip or, 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 or untruths or, or unallegedly um information what i'm gonna do with it. it's just like delectable candies and, and and wine and stuff that you haven't had in a while and it's expensive you're like should i partake and you know you got like the good um angel on your shoulder and the bad angel on your shoulder you're like which one which one which one and sometimes we do lean on to having the bad angel we want to know it all so we can sit kiki about it talk about it we, um 
dissecting it to see why would a person do this, blah, blah, blah. You know, this is common curiosity and stupidity that we do partake of at our lifetime. But we have to repent about it and go on about our business and say, hey, that ain't us. But if I can lend a little help, a little wisdom here and there, let me talk to this person and see what's really going on. And, you know, Marla was just dropping well, she really wasn't dropping it down. She just opened up the door. And then she went to a person that told her the information that came from somebody else. You know, he say, she say stuff. You know, and then you just have to, like, if you're really curious and you want to know, you go ask the person that we're talking about that's the main subject of the event. And then let them say what they got to say. Okay, but this person was just dropping tea. Like, even didn't have this. She didn't have that. She owed this. She... She uh, old that. She's leasing everything. She don't own nothing. Repossession of cars. Her uh, husband right now, Michael, don't have no money. He throw just that in the third. <laughs> just so much going on. And then in all her graciousness and her, her craziness as well. She's like, oh, Lord, not the repossession, not the cars. I'm like, oh, don't we all know someone or it's, or it has happened to us, you know, losing your house or getting thrown out your apartment, getting repossession, you know, of items that you can't simply afford anymore, uh, whether it's voluntary or, you know, you didn't want them to come, but they came and took you. I'm voluntary. So this is what it is. We know somebody has had that done to them, but we had it done to ourselves. So I ain't nothing, you know, shady about it. It's just we want to get you know, plug down on TV for everybody to know about and be able to talk about it. And when they see you, they be like, oh, she ain't got nothing. She don't do that. And all of us here say until the person has validated it or you found a record of it in the courthouse somewhere. Uh, Cab County, Fulton County, Gwinnett County, wherever we're staying, okay? There is a law that's privy information <laughs> that even reporters uh, like the AJC or news reporters, Channel 5, Channel 2, Channel 11, go up and dig up on your behind if it's a good story. They putting it out there, okay? And they only going by what they done read and, and saw on paper, okay? Filings is what we call it. But, um, like I said, Marlo is the bearer of bad news <laughs> and gossip, and she holds that title very well. Can't nobody do it like Marlo, okay? Because when Marlo speaks, everyone listens, okay? So um, it was a bad thing. And then then you like, I can't believe, I, I I can't be sitting up here talking about, you know, somebody I do care about. I, I just think I need to tell. And I was like, okay, Nene, if you want to uh tell, cool. It came out of your mouth. It didn't come out of nobody else's mouth. But it was left from the understanding of the women that, it's because nobody else really wants to say they wanted to tell us. So we would say, okay, Nene, you tell them since you volunteer. But then we have a situation where Candy has a little party. She's going to open up a new um, old lady gang's type of uh, restaurant situation. Um, like I said, don't know if she's leasing the building. Because it is kind of weird that you would sit and buy a building. You really haven't had five or ten years in the business to say yeah i always thought it was better to lease in case the building um or your idea of holding the restaurant kind of was going down south you could you know actually get out of it you might have to sell the equipment and all this kind of stuff in the building that holds everything together for us the people coming in and you cooking for them and just that and third but to lease prior to buying unless you know you don't been in business for a while and you know what it takes. And she's only been in business for two years. So that's why I'm thinking she's leasing and she's doing real good. And then she can go back and buy it because it seems like it may be in a plaza type of situation. I don't know, you know, but it just is what it is. OK, go ahead. Can and do your thing. Not throwing salt on your name, honey. But anyway, just trying to figure out how you're moving and shaking. All right. To make it make sound sense to me. But then it don't really have to sound uh, good, don't make good sense to me because you give the revenue, not me. Let me check my own self, okay? All righty then. Get him back in my lane, all right? But anyway, they go to um Candace little opening up of her little um her restaurant, the second phase of OLG. Now she's trying to move on to the third phase. But you know it is what it is. If I told her, I think she better stay on Real Housewives of Atlanta because they paying you like that, girl. 
you need to milk it until it's dry. But anyway, that's just my opinion. I'm going to get back in my lane, okay? I'm just on the outside looking in, giving my perspective. Nobody asked for it. No, it didn't. But, it, you know, I want to drop this little piece of information. I thought I was just going to just share it with you all in case similar minds were thinking alike. Okay? All right. But anyway, um, moving on from there, um, situation comes up where I, mean, I call it a little patty cake. Patty cake, baker's man. You know what I'm saying? A woman's man. I, I just, she just like a little patty cake to me. Like somebody you can just swap, pop, 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 you know, and like sit in the cone and, and put the dump hat on and, and don't know how much. She, Cynthia looks better in my mind than Tanya does. Because Tanya is just like she can't hold water. You know, it's like, uh, you know, she's going to play Big Bad Wolf and want to take the ranks and be, spill the tea. When she, that wasn't her tea to spill because Nene had already said she's going to take care of it. So she went and told Eva everything about what people were saying about her and where they found out the information, who's the, the carrier of the information and stuff. And first she's going to get mad and be like, Mala, Mala. I'm like, girl, don't care. it don't matter who it came from, okay? Because these ain't your friends. If you, hadn't, if you haven't thought about it, uh, no, they're not your friends. They're your coworkers. That was a good pun that um, Nene had put out there. I said, God damn it. And Nene, be, she be doing darn fine. She be dropping whistle and people be like she be in shady. Like, no, honey, these are your co-workers. You go to work. You do what you got to do to make this show so you can get your coin and you bounce on out with your real friends, you know. But I really think her and um, uh, Marlo may do hang out and it's a personal relationship. Uh, sort of what she probably had with Cynthia, but Cynthia trying to come into her own. But she trying to be a little shady with it. You know, instead of certain herself, when Nene and her got back together after that friendship contract had burnt up and they decided they wanted to get back together as friends, which we already know. I don't know why um, Cynthia made a friendship contract. Anyway, we we just don't do that. Not knowing people. Like I said, Tanya done came and replaced her now. Cynthia a little bit farther up on the totem pole now in my mind because Tanya has taken her place of being total brainless. I mean, and, and non-caring in a malicious type of way. And Marlo, you already know she coming with the tea. And the tea gonna be probably pretty much straight up. It's gonna be it's gonna be straight up, you know, tea. Good strong tea with a little chase of sugar. Okay. But, you know, Tanya's like playing in a little baby league. Like when you go to kindergarten and you be saying what well, they did, this, that she did, did they? you know that little pity pad stuff. So that's why I call her Patty Cade. You know, I'm like, girl, sit yourself down somewhere. I ain't even like her even expressing how she had tried to break it down to um, Evil. But like I said, Evil received it. And, you know, she had already knew who it came from or what she thought who had spilled beans so that Marla would have a story. And it was like, okay. All right, it's all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So then she gets upset. She gonna call herself. She gonna leave. She ain't got nothing for these girls. But I'm like, Eva, haven't you learned nothing from dealing in the worlds of the worlds of entertainment? Now you gotta stand your ground. You tell your side. The other person pull their side, and the truth lands somewhere in the middle. But you always set the tone of how something's gonna play out, especially if you're the subject. Of the objectivity, okay? Write your own storyline and how it's going to start, finish, well, start, and proceed, and how it's going to finish. You do that and let the other people try to figure out who's right, who's wrong, who's lying. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. She got herself out to listen to what Tanya had to say. She gonna leave, okay? And then Tanya gonna act like she ain't did nothing. And then you know Nene gonna finally show up to the gathering, you know, wishing everybody well, hope they're doing well. She doing well, we're doing well, or uh, as much as possible, uh, being well. And um, she wanna know what happened to Eva. Where Eva gone? And Tanya, said, oh, she gone. She left. She said, you know, like she ain't did. And then, then she gonna sit and uh, have a little attitude as she tell Nene she told her what folk was saying about her in the streets. And Nene was like, who told you to do that? And then she gonna try to get ugly. Like, they don't matter how to tell me. I that was my friend. I wanted to tell her. She said, but no, then we have a conversation about who gonna tell what and when and well. And uh, she like, yeah, but I, I can tell too. Like, you gonna get an attitude? Like, no, baby, you were wrong. If you wanted to actually give the information to Eva, you should express it when you, Nene, and Marlo were sitting at Marlo's house, kicking about the situation. You should have gave Nene a run for her money. But no, you said nothing, and you said out your own mouth. Yes, it'll be better 
serve that, uh, yeah, you tell her. Yeah, because she looks up to you, this, that, and the third. And I was like, Tanya, 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 sit yourself down. Like, where do we get her from? Where do we get her from? Because she will be one friend of the family that she didn't have to come back, okay? Because she, she's just nonsense. We already got Cynthia. We don't need her, okay? She, we don't need her as a friend of the friend because she don't know how to be a friend. She don't know how to keep her mouth shut. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, maybe production or uh, uh, executive crew said, well, we want you to spill it so we can have another storyline of Nene getting on your behalf for talent. I'm like, okay, if that's what happened, then kudos. You did it because I was just feeling some kind of way when Tanya opened her mouth when she should have kept her mouth shut. But anyway, it just is what it is with that woman. So, um, let me see. What's it about? Um, Nene called herself doing damage control or whatnot. So, <laughs> let me call this girl back. Because y'all, you don't messed up everything. But Nene got her straight and I was here and ready for it. Okay? Even Marlo came in like, this, you weren't supposed to tell nothing. You were Girl, we're we going to have to dish you. I'm just me and Nene just going to have a conversation and whatever because you, you crazy. You know what I'm saying? Or we gave you too much to drink. Or you don't have too much to drink at this little uh, shindig candy got thrown down to us. You know, of course, all the ladies want to know what's going on and this, that, and third. And, uh, you know, it just is what it is. But anyway, Nene called her. Meaning, Eva to see, you know, what was going on. She apologized for everybody. You know, Eva thought everybody was talking about her. She said, uh-huh, honey. Uh, pretty much, that was just Tanya doing a foul. She did a foul on the play or whatever. But anybody else talking about you, they kind of feel sorry for you. They want you to come back. They want to love on you, girl. And then Eva was sitting up there talking about, oh, well, I mess with you, Nene. You know, I, I come and talk to you, but I don't want no mics on. And I don't want nobody to listen to our conversation. It's just going to be privy information between me and you. And not be seen on TV. And I'm like, did Eva bump her head as she went out the door and drove off? This is reality TV. Everybody going to be mic'd up. We want to see gossip, drama, and anything else you want to give us that's going to keep the ratings up. Okay? Eva, come with it or leave it alone. Okay? Be like Kim Phil said. It's enough. I can't take it no more. I got a life. And keep it moving. But evidently, it seems like you're not in Kim Fields' role or, 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 or a space in life where, you know, definitely secure the bag and it's, you're still living out the interest. You can't make power moves like that. Okay? Because she went away with no problem. She didn't talk bad about the crew when she exited. And it's just an experience. She said she learned. And, and she probably won't do it again. But it's cool. And she left, you know, very uh, kosher and everything. So I was I was so proud of Kim Phil. I still want her to come back. Hell, I want Sheree to come back with her foolishness and Kim's OCS. And everybody else. Hey, bring the whole cast back and give uh, the older people. On the show, and in the season, people that have been here for a while, get them a cut. Get them a little cut to bring somebody else back. Let them have a salary. Make it more interesting. But then we're going to go to, uh, we finished with this because it wasn't that thing. Even started talking about she had lived in many homes because of some domestic violent thing she uh, is a part of with her baby daddy. And this, that, and the third. Or she called him a sperm donor. I'm like, girl, you talking about your baby's. Dad, let, let all that go. Cause at one point in time in this lifetime, you do that, man, because you had a baby with him, so stop it. So, but she going on talking mess and saying she got to travel from house to house because of this, that, and the third. And Marlo was like, girl, if it was that serious, you wouldn't be on this reality TV show. And, or, you wouldn't be texting and tweeting and all this saying, where you at, where you going, and this, that, and the third. Girl, come on. No, when you're in a uh, situation where you're hiding from somebody for the protection of your life, your family's life, and stuff of that nature, you incognito. You ain't doing nothing. Don't nobody know you. You might even get a face change. You know what I'm saying? But that's just here what it is. You know, but she had her side. Like I said, it's always A side, B side. And then you have C right there in the middle trying to figure it all out of what's the truth. Alrighty, but Nene convinced her to come back. They talking in the park line. Then she come back and address the women and try to stand up in her, her stuff. Of course, she called her uh, husband. And he out there talking with Nene in the park line and saying, I told her she need to come back. I said, you being like Peter Thomas now. You being a woman. We don't need you, uh, Mike, to be sitting here trying to give us. I think that's his name, Mike, ain't it? 
I don't know, but you know I'm evil sub. She just married. We don't need no conversation from him. He acting like Peter Thomas. We we don't need a a, a a housewife man again. No, 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 no. Peter much got that sold up. We like Peter. Okay. He proved himself. He proved himself for us to nominate him as being a housewife slash housewife husband. Okay. So uh, that pretty much was it. I want to just go and talk a little bit about Bertha. Bertha was asked, along with Mama Joyce and the other uh, sister, to host um, an, the event with them of the new OLGs opening up. And their part that they're going to play in the grand opening of their second restaurant. And, you know, they're supposed to be dishing out some dessert or making some dessert on the spot. And Bertha said, is it going to be... Uh, <laughs> Says it gonna be in it, uh gloves. We gonna be wearing gloves. I'm like, first it's no problem. You don't been to the restaurant when folks hadn't been using gloves preparing food. Who how nasty? How nasty, Bertha? Get them on the get them on the control. But Bertha was like, I ain't feeling this. I want to sit down in my behind too and just see everybody come in and enjoy the food or whatever. Ask me questions about what part I played and what uh delectable dessert or entree they're snacking on and, and how I prepared. You know, talk to me about that. I ain't finna stop here and be serving nobody. <laughs> Bertha said, I'm already retired, baby. And y'all are killing me with this mess. Okay? But she was she was not here. She was not here for it. Okay? Bertha wasn't right here. She was not here for it. Well, y'all, I love my Bertha. I love my Bertha. And Mama Joy, she don't look like she's taking a back seat. Now, she's just settling in in her retirement and she's you know, looking good and feeling good. So, Bertha got to give it to us. And I'm all here for it. Okay. Y'all, that was my take on The Real Housewives of Atlanta that aired last week. Uh, No money. Mo Problems. Season 11, episode 19. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Please share, like, and um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. And I'll see you next time for another video. Don't know what it's going to be, but it should be exciting. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.